Hey everybody, I'm back today with another project share. This is again for the Midori notebook. I'm going to show today how to make your very own inserts. And there are many, many videos out there on how to do this. That's just the way I'm doing it. And I probably learned it from Ray Blake over at uh, My Life All in One Place. And I'll leave that link down below. Um, there are other videos that I have referred to and I have put them down below in the link section, the description box, I mean. But I want to show you all how to make your very own books. Um, this will save money in the long run. I use typing paper. Boy, I just dated myself. I use printer paper and um, this particular thing, since it's my own, I'm going to show it. This is a, uh, a notebook I made just for me so that I can personalize it with the dates of the week. I do one week on one page. I do two weeks, actually, on one page. Um, but I like one half of it to be for a whole week and the other half to be for a whole week. My personal preference, just the way I do it. And so I made up my own thing. I don't sell these or I have... I don't have a source, I don't have a way to do that stuff, but I finally figured out my uh, measurements and was able to print out my own things. So you can do it too if I can. Um, a few other kinds of lists that I like to keep. And I've made notebooks out of these. This is just me scrapping around, so that's not how it's really going to look. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you all how I go about putting together my very own notebooks, inserts, just to save money. And what I'm using today is a uh, template that I bought, uh, a printable download that I got off of Etsy. The information will be down below. And uh, I wish I'd been thinking ahead of time. I'll go grab that information before the end of the video. This is her honestly one of the best things I've ever seen in my life uh, this is a pain journal a pain journal is just a place you can write down and sorry if y'all you know don't like to see a body there but anyway it's just a place for you to keep and journal your own physical pain your thought processes any notes you need to make it also has on here it's you can f do it for any day of the week of the month it has a pain scale for morning noon and night and a water reminder and a prescription reminder this one also comes in different variations um, it, I believe it also comes in uh, this particular page on both sides so you can get with her and look at her shop on that uh, she's extremely extremely helpful my husband also wanted one with the male um, figure on the side and so I have also bought one of those for him and she helped me get the, the same setup for him this particular one I'm making for my stepdaughter I'm making her quite a few I have quite a few of them already put together to this point all you do is print it off on both sides and then you fold them in half now I am making these for the Midori travelers excuse me travelers notebook in the regular or standard size it's also known as narrow and when I cut these edges off the excess it will fit perfectly in a traveler's notebook because I'm going to cut along these lines that are conveniently already marked for me now I'm going to cut the bottom and the top so this is how I do it and this is according to Ray Blake this is where I learned how to do it the very first ones I've ever made 
after I fold all the pages, and I mean fold and crease and crease and crease, I try to get that just as flat as I can. Uh, this is a very thick book, this particular one. I have put, let me count, I use 17 pieces of paper folded in half in this particular one. And that's because I wanted to, uh, I was writing some notes to myself here. If I use 16 of these pages that I just showed you, 16 of these folded in half will get me 32 days. So for one month with 31 days, I'm going to have 32 actual pages that are you can write on. And then I have a front page on it that I took from my husband's thing. It's got just a few blanks in here you can fill out for your medication and stuff. And I think there's a calendar on the back side over there. But uh, ask about that because I think that came on the mail uh, pain journal. I am pushing on this side especially and holding it tight here while I push. Try to make sure those papers are as far into the left side as they can be so that when I come along and there I just messed that up I felt it slide so that when I come along there it goes now I'm putting a lot of pressure on here right now because I'm going I'm fixing to stand up here I'm going to put the pressure on my ruler if I can pick it up And I'm going to match up these trim lines, top and bottom, and very, very carefully, just like I did on the plastic that we made the uh, um, dashboards with, very carefully. I'm putting a lot of pressure on my left hand on top of the ruler. I'm going to use a craft knife or utility knife, whatever that's called, and very gently just slide it down and keep sliding it down, holding it next to the ruler. I'm letting the pressure of the knife in my right hand, which just fell apart, um, cut these slivers of excess paper off while I hold it down on the left side. Let me mention one other lady um, in her blog um, Carrie Harling is an in incredible planner person. Her mind is so, she's very intelligent. You can tell just by listening to her talk. Um, it keeps wanting to get loose. She has many videos on keeping a a notebook on there it goes, on a different types of notebooks too but she also has um, learned this method I think from Ray Blake and she also showed this on one of her videos I will attach her information down below as well and that looks pretty good I don't think I messed up any of the pages either. Didn't feel like it. Um, it's a it's a process. I usually have to do a few books, then go do something different because of you know the pressure on my wrist. Because I do press down pretty hard when I do these. And now, I'm gonna line up the top part. Same idea. And I'm not cutting downward into the fold. I'm cutting downward into the open area. And y'all, this thing is so loose, it is maybe not safe. This one, for some reason, when I do it this direction, is so much quicker than the other one. And there it goes. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom section. 
and this one I'm just going to eyeball it because I'm going to do it from the back side. Well, actually, there's a mark right there. And do it again. Like I said, this is all over the internet, y'all. YouTube people that do these notebooks have, have uh, shared this many times. And so I take no credit whatsoever for this idea. To me, that's just the easiest way to do it. And so here's the notebook. Isn't that cool? I'm always thrilled when I make a notebook. It's just exciting to me. Let's see how it measures up. Pretty good. I like that size. And then I want to put a cover over it. Now I have a cheat note in here. There it is. For my measurements. And I wanted to keep that piece. If you want lots of bookmarks, there they are. Give them to your local library. They might appreciate that. Now... This, this is for my stepdaughter. She loves bright, beautiful colors, and we share the same love for lovely colors. So she has picked some colors, sent me swatches, actually, that she likes. So there they are. Verified that these colors were good. Some of her favorites. So I'm going to go, excuse me, I'm going to start with this color right here. And I'm going to cut it, first of all, I need to sit down if you'll excuse me. My back hurts so bad today. I want to cut it so that, I'm going to use this as an example so you can see what I'm talking about. There's a tiny smidge difference. I prefer the insert to be slightly inside the cover. I mean, where you can't even tell that it's inside the cover. But, um, and that it, there's a difference. I don't like it to come out extra because that's just going to fold over the edges. You know what I mean? But as close as possible and maybe a tiny bit over. So to do that, I need to keep in mind that this is a thick book. And whatever my height is on here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark that first thing. I'm going to do the height. And then I'm going to cut off any excess so that I'll have a piece of paper that goes all the way across. I can see, I hope you can too, let me move this over so I can make sure you can see. I can see at the very bottom just a smidge of the color of that cardstock. By the way, this is cardstock. I should have mentioned that. So I want that to show here, and I'm going to go just above it and do the same allowance at the top. It is minuscule, just a little bit. And then I'm going to come over to the other side of my paper. This is just how I do it, leaving that same amount of room here. And then I'm going to leave the same amount of room at the top just a little extra so that I'm gonna set that aside so that when I sorry y'all I'm using a tripod that stands on the floor and I'm not used to doing that when I take my paper cutter with that incredibly strong ruler magnet and I apologize ahead of time I have not oiled this thing in quite a while and now it has started to squeak since I've started using it again. So forgive the squeak. When I run this across, I'm just making sure it's perfectly straight. Sorry, close your ears. Here it goes. Okay, there's that piece. The next thing I want to do is of course check it because why go to the trouble if it's not going to work right okay there's that little edge and when I get it all put together it will work perfectly now I'm going to match the back of the book to the back pages here and I do not want a whole lot of overlap right here 
just a, a tiny, tiny bit. And once I find it, there, at the bottom and at the top, here's, here's my method. I'm going to go straight into it and I'm going to mark it just kind of real lightly right up and down so I can see where that is. Now I have a little mark on here and this is going to be my fold line. And yes, this gets a little involved, but it's going to be worth it in the end because it's going to make a nice cover. Next, I take my score pal. I'm going to try to do it because I'm going to need, I'm going to need the cutter again in just a minute. I put it on here, and as you'll see, it matches up pretty close to that four inch mark on this one. I'm going to score it at the four inch mark after making sure I have it down here just right. This piece of paper is not truly 12 inches, is it? Okay, I'm going to do it from the left though. So I'm going to score it down. And then I'm going to lift it up. And using that score line, I'm going to come over to the left just a smidge, not even a whole other mark. And measuring it up flat against the top, because I know my paper will be straight then, I'm going to score it one more time so that I have a score line just a little further over than the original one. Let me show that to you. Can you see that here? Those are going to be where I fold this piece of paper. Before I cut this other edge off, I'm going to give it a fold on both of those creases that I just made, those score lines that I just made. It takes a little finagling to get both of them folded. 